Crating is a really easy way to design complex 3D shapes on paper. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to the basics of crating. Once you've tried these techniques, you'll be surprised just how easy they make it to draw accurate 3D designs. Hello and welcome back to Artbikes. My name is Mr. Heaton. Hopefully you've already seen my last video on the basics of isometric drawing. If you've not seen it yet, there's a link in the description on this video. Make sure you watch it because otherwise you might not quite understand what's going on. Isometric drawing is a really great way of drawing really boxy shapes. Buildings like these are really easy to draw with isometric drawing. But sometimes we want to be able to add diagonal lines or curves and circles to our drawings. Crating is a really useful method of creating a 3D drawing that is quite complex, but is still reasonably accurate and reasonably easy to draw. It allows our isometric drawings to go from boring and boxy to complicated and curvy. Let's start with diagonal lines. I'll add a pitched roof to this building. Lots of houses have pitched roofs. Sounds like a great idea, right? Doesn't look quite right, does it? This is because we've not used the rules of isometric projection to draw it. Isometric drawing relies on everything being at the right angles, and when we change those angles, things don't look quite right. This time I'm going to imagine my roof has been delivered to me in a big cardboard box. So, what I'm going to do is draw my box. If you're not sure how to draw cubes or cuboids using isometric drawing, make sure you check out that video that I mentioned earlier. Now, if I find the middle of these top edges, I can join them up to form the top of my roof. Then, I can join that up with the corners of my box, and I'll have an accurate triangle. I can then add a few details, and voila! Nice, neat roof. Oh, and I'll rub out the construction lines. There's no need to keep that cardboard box lying around. As you can see, using these construction lines helps us to make sure that our diagonal lines are accurate. Curves are just as easy as diagonal lines. So I think I'll add a nice big window like this one here. Uh, by the way, this is a great example of why mobile games use isometric drawing so much. See if I take this building and I want to move it closer. I don't need to change the size at all, because in isometric drawing, objects don't get smaller as they get further away. So this time, because my window will be flat, I'll just need to draw a rectangle on the wall. Then I'll mark out the centre just to help me keep it even. And I'll draw two curves either side of the centre, and then rub out the construction lines. You can use this technique for any curve. Remember, these construction lines are there to help you, and use them as you need. OK, I think my isometric house is looking OK so far, but I think it could be a little bit better. We've done some diagonal lines, we've done some curves, and I think it's time we try some circles now. So I'm going to add a chimney. Circles are one of the hardest parts about creating because in isometric drawing we're looking at everything from an angle. And when we look at circles from an angle, they become ellipses or squished circles. So let's make a start on this chimney. We're going to do the same thing as we did previously. I'm going to draw a crate and this time it's going to be a tall, thin crate. Notice how I'm drawing it inside the building because I want my chimney to look like it comes out of the roof rather than next to it. I'm also drawing the bits of the crate that you wouldn't normally be able to see, as though the crate is see-through. If something doesn't look right by the way when you're doing this, chances are you've either probably not drawn enough crates, or you've not been using the angles for those crates correctly. Let's start with the circle on top then. Now, you can do this with a compass for sort of super accurate circles, and there are tutorials elsewhere on YouTube for that. But to be honest, for rougher drawings like this, I normally don't bother. I do, however, find it helpful to add some extra construction lines for circles. So I'm going to join up the corners first, because that then marks out the, the middle of my circle. 
I'm then going to start to draw my circle, trying to keep that ellipse that we talked about, that squished circle. Now, because this circle is going to become a chimney, a cylinder, I can then add two vertical lines on either side of my circle. Once I've done that, I can rub out the construction lines because I don't need them anymore. So long as you keep the angles for your crates the same the whole way through your drawing, you can use these techniques to create really interesting drawings. If you'd like to learn more about drawing or art and design, make sure you click the subscribe button to help support me making these videos, and I'll see you next time.